Hello, Andy. hello, how are you? Andy Nguyen, fancy seeing you around here. <laughs> you know, it's nice to be in the great city of New York for once. Yeah, welcome to my apartment. Alrighty, oh, there's a mirror here. So, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well, never better. Are you ready for your 73 questions? I guess I don't have a choice. <laughs> Alrighty, so for the people at home who aren't subscribed or don't know who you are, what's your name? My name is Michael Cellini and... What is I'm your specialty? A, I'm an interventional radiologist currently living in New York City. And how many years have you been practicing? Uh, one week. <laughs> one week? Because I just finished my fellowship, so I'm currently now finally an interventional radiologist. So I start practicing in two weeks from now. Gotcha. Officially. So, where'd you go to undergrad? Undergrad at University of Georgia, go dogs. Go dogs indeed. And medical school? Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Did you take any gap years before going to med school? I didn't take a gap year per se, but I was a non-traditional student, which means I was an econ major in undergrad, so I had to go back and take all my pre-med prerequisites. So if you want to call it a gap year, maybe it was like two years between the two. That's yeah. Yeah. So it's been a while. Yeah. Do you remember what was your favorite part about medical school? Meeting the four or five closest friends of my life. We do everything together. We're in all different specialties. We travel together. We talk every single day. Best group of friends I could ever ask for. That's awesome. Now, what specialty did you think you were going to go into on your first day of med school? Oh, I said this on one of my videos before. I, I, I thought I wanted to do anesthesiology, but I quickly retracted that as soon as I heard all those uh, slurping <laughs> noises. I was going to say, what changed your mind about that specialty? But that answers that question. Yeah, it was, it was not for me. Were there any other specialties you immediately said, absolutely not for me? Almost all of them, besides radiology. <laughs> so you were just one track? Pretty much, yeah. So what first made you fall in love with radiology, or more specifically, interventional radiology? Radiology was more so the fact that you knew a little bit about all fields and that you were the doctor's doctor. I like interventional radiology because I like procedures. So those who may be interested in being you one day, how long does your training take after med school? Oh God, it's a long time. So after med school, you do one year, in, you do one year internship, either in surgery or medicine, or a transitional year, followed by four years diagnostic radiology, and one year interventional radiology after that. So six years. Okay, all right. Uh, it's just been recently announced you're in an attending position. So how does it feel to finally be in an attending <laughs> position? You know, it hasn't really sunk in yet, but the fact that I don't have to be in training anymore, it's next level. It feels good. Weight off my shoulders. Do you want a water? Oh, uh, sure. I'll take one. Thank yeah. you. So, did you ever consider getting other degrees, like an MBA or an MPH? Thank you. I have. Being as I was a business major in undergrad, I considered getting an MPH, and I thought about getting an MBA. I still might, actually. We'll see. So what would you say is the most unique part of your specialty? Probably the fact that I get to work with every single specialty in the hospital. Well said. So put your salesman cap on, all right? What, or why should someone choose your specialty? Because you get to do amazing procedures under image guidance and you get to work with some of the fanciest equipment out there. Turn around, devil's advocate. Why should someone not choose your specialty? You don't like wearing lead for uh, hours at a time. Uh, you gotta get, gotta get in the gym, you know. Yeah, if you have back problems, it's not good. <laughs> All right, fun question. Are there any stereotypes of your specialty? <laughs> there are a ton. We're all introverts that love being in dark spaces. Are they true? No, somewhat. <laughs> so now that you're an attending, you hold the power to pimp residents and fellows. What would be your go-to question to ask them on the wards? What's your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? That's Wait, all I care about. That's so insightful. Yeah. I love it. So turn it around. I'm sure you've had some uh, time being pimped yourself. So what's the craziest question you've ever been asked? Oh God, I can't even remember. I, the countless times in the OR, they'd ask me some insane surgical anatomy, nuanced anatomy that I had no idea what I was looking at, especially as a med student. Oh God, uh, I'm not ready for that. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> So are you ever nervous at all coming into your shifts? You know, you get less nervous as you get more confident. I think the more you do procedures and the more you do stuff, you get 
less nervous, but there's always some component of anxiety, especially when you're doing something you haven't done before or haven't done in a while. Mm. So how many patients do you see on an average day? Diagnostic-wise, we can see anywhere from 50 to 150 patients. For interventional radiology, I don't know, maybe 10 to 20 procedures a day, give or take. What's the most amount of patients you see in a day, you've ever seen in a day? The most procedures I've ever done in a day is 10, and that's very exhausting. The most studies I've read in a day is probably like 180. Okay. But what is your favorite procedure to do? Oh, uterine fibroid embolization. I love it. All right. How many hours do you work in an average week? In fellowship, in fellowship or residency, probably 50 hours in residency, diagnostic and interventional, 80 to 100 easily. And I know that's not allowed. <laughs> so this is always fun to ask the different uh, specialties because they have varying answers. Mm -hmm. How many? Or what time do you normally wake up? I, I'm weird though. I wake up at 5.15 every single day, regardless of how late I was up the night before, or regardless of what, what time I have to go to work. So what time do you normally leave the hospital? Probably the average around six. Which, which bourbon should I go, go with today? Ooh, I'm a rum guy personally. Rum, I can't drink rum. Bourbon only. All right, Let's uh, see. choose the top shelf. Thing you got. Top it's, time, it's time to celebrate. All right, there's some secret stuff over here. So maybe we'll go with, yeah, maybe we'll go with a little, we'll go with E.H. Taylor. Good there choice. There we go. Sorry, I'm not a bourbon guy. Ah, it's good. All right, so how many hours of sleep are you typically working on? Usually probably seven, I think is probably the average. Those people who get eight hours every night, I, I've never had eight hours of sleep before. I don't understand that. <laughs> How many hours of sleep are you working on right now? After being jet lagged, coming from Hawaii and doing an overnight flight, maybe five hours? And there's very restless hours. Oh man. Okay. Night or day shift person? Love night shift because it's quiet and there's not crazy hospital things going on, but day shift where you get to see all your friends. Okay. Do you have to take call at all? Right now, no, because I'm off until I start attending life, but I do have to take call seven days per month coming up. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take you to chart at the end of your day? Best part about radiology is you don't chart. Oh gosh, you might've just sold me. I know, it's a secret. All right, some more uh, reflective questions. Who are you most thankful for on your care team? Probably my mentors, they've taught me a lot. What's the funniest thing you've seen in a patient chart, you know, without violating HIPAA, of course? Oh, God. There, we see, keep in mind, we see everything because we're a radiologist. So there's some crazy things people like to place in crazy spaces. We'll leave it at that. Understood. Yeah. What's the most common medical advice you give to your patients? Common medical advice? I'm not trying to harm you. If you listen to me, it'll help you. But if you don't, what can you do? <laughs> So what is your favorite nerdy random medical fact, if you have one? Off the top of my head? That's a tough question. Uh, I, was, I stumped so many people on this one. I honestly, I don't know. I don't, I don't have an answer. Maybe I'll think of one while we yeah. go through this. So what are you most looking forward to as an attending compared to your time as a resident or fellow? Uh, actually getting time off whenever I want. Understood. All right, so we've talked a lot about life inside the hospital. How about your life when you clock out? So what is your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Favorite thing to do other than this past year because of the pandy wandy is travel. I love it. Okay. It's the best thing. Does your family ever ask you for random medical advice? You know, they told me when I first started med school, from this day forward, you will be the doctor getting questions your entire life from every single family member, even the ones you haven't spoken to in 10 years. And that holds true almost daily. What's the weirdest question a family or friend has ever asked you then? <laughs> they, they get really personal and you know, sometimes I don't want to know that about my family members. I don't have anything specific though. <laughs> okay. All right, fun question. Favorite animal, not a dog or a cat? Guinea pig. Nice. Favorite sneaker at the moment? Ooh, that's a good question. Probably my not, I'll show you. Hold on. Oh, yes. We get an exclusive sneak peek, huh? This is my, if I can get it. 
Love this. Air Max 1s, old school, retro. Yes. I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm simple. I keep it old, you know, retro. Yeah. All right, so I know you're a big investing guy. So I got $100 in my pocket. Where should I invest it? In an ETF, because it's safe. Safer, I should say. Yeah. If you could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? Frank Sinatra. And what would you guys be eating? Italian, of course. Then, what's your favorite dish to eat? Oh, God. Cacio de pepe. Classy. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, tea, or soda? Coffee, every single day, every morning. Yes. Sometimes in the afternoon. All right. Uh, one of my favorite questions, because every physician gives me a different answer. How much water should you be drinking every day? <laughs> Whatever your body tells you. There are requirements, but I don't know them off the top of my head. <laughs> so, favorite meal from the hospital cafeteria, if you have one? Tacos on Tuesday up at my previous hospital. Same, same lady used to make them every single day, and they were perfect. She knew my order. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so I heard you're a decent swimmer. Mm. So, if you were to get in the pool right now, what do you think your 100 meter IM time would be? 100 meter, <laughs> this is pretty specific. Yeah. Uh, I was a swimmer in college. I swam for the better part of my life. So, if I were to do a 100 meter IM, I don't know. Let's hope it's under a minute. Probably yeah. not, though. <laughs> it's been all too right. long. So, usually, collegiate athletes are all just like super freaks of nature and are good at every sport. But what is one sport you wish you could be better at? Basketball. Because everybody thinks I'm a good basketball player because I'm 6'4", but not that good. Yeah, I'm out here holding the camera super high. <laughs> yeah. 6'4". All right. Prepare to be judged by the internet. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Oh, my father would kill me if I put pineapple on my pizza. <laughs> at least you have an excuse to say no. <laughs> uh, any artistic hobbies you keep up with? Yeah, but let's go upstairs and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. There's a lot. Alrighty. So one of the artistic hobbies I have is probably YouTube, as you may or may not know. <laughs> as, I, as I zoom in on the 100,000 subscriber plaque. That's probably one of my biggest hobbies. Um, you know, I, I really got used to just doing more like editing, videography, that kind of stuff. That's kind of how... And that's kind of why I kind of started YouTube. I like the photography aspect of it. And once I started learning how to edit, I wanted to make more videos and shoot cool shots and all that stuff. All right, anything else? Um, artistic wise, I've been really liking how they make bourbon. I've been really into the, the bourbon making, the, um, you know, where the bourbon comes from. The, the aging process and all that good stuff. And some of these bourbons are really hard to find and I love the history behind them all. How long have you been keeping up with that? This, oh, this is probably the last five years, but the last two years we got really excited about it. So some of my friends from med school, the ones I mentioned before that we talk every day, we kind of find different bourbons in our respective cities that you can't get in other cities and states. And we'll send each other some randomly just to kind of surprise each other. That's awesome. Top three music artists. Oh God. Um, I listen to a lot of EDM, but it's not a specific one. So, oh God, I'd have to get my phone out for that. I don't know, come back to it. I'll get my phone out. <laughs> Dream car that's not a Jeep. <laughs> How'd you know I used to like Jeeps? I used hey, to always you're drive a Georgia Jeeps. guy, come yeah. on. I figured. I know, I can't, I can't knock it. Um, Dream car is probably a Lamborghini Urus. What's the best way that you relax after a long day? Bourbon and sitting on the couch, or the rooftop, where we're going now. Nice. Night in or go out on the town kind of person? Ooh, if I was younger, it'd be more nights on the town, but nowadays, sometimes I like a night in every now and then. But I'm in New York City, you have to enjoy it, right? You're saying that like you're super old. Yeah. <laughs> we're waiting on this elevator for 15 minutes. Let me grab my phone to find some artists. All right. Keep talking. Uh, beach or mountains? Uh, beach. Uh, introvert or extrovert? Extrovert. Would you say that was a factor in you choosing your specialty? Very much so, because two reasons. One, I wanted people to realize that not already, not all radiologists are introverts. And two, you gotta like the people you work with. So, IR is awesome. That's very true. Normally, you would 
think that radiologists are super introverts. Mm -hmm. But thank you for being a bowl breaker. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I try to do, you know? All right, so uh, there's only a few more questions left, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can get it on the rooftop before. I know this elevator is <laughs> taking forever, isn't it? <laughs> we get there. Uh, but as we wrap up, I want to ask a few more reflective questions. Mm -hmm. So what did you think you were going to be when you grew up as a kid? I really wanted to be a real estate mogul because that's what my uncle was, but I enjoy real estate, I invest in real estate, but it wasn't for me. Gotcha. So is there a different specialty you think you could have done? So I was really interested in doing urology, but for some reason, towards the end, I just, it just wasn't for me. I don't know. What made you change? I, I like the procedural aspect of it, but there's a little too much clinic, and I didn't like all those long, long surgeries. All right. It's a long time. Ooh, it's bright out here. Welcome to the rooftop. What a view. So. Change the pace a little bit. Exactly. Got only a few more questions, all right? Hit me. Oh. If you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Man, these are tough questions. Probably, probably a stock trader. Okay. That's what I really wanted to do. All right, so everybody that goes to medicine knows it's a difficult field. Were there any times that you doubted you would make it as a doctor? <laughs> Before I even started, but you just kind of push through and keep going and every step of the way is harder than the last, but if I can do it, anybody can. I promise you. If you could change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? Man, that's a deep question. It I is. I told you. <laughs> I would, I would like for just everybody to get along as a team and not be so competitive because at the end of the day, it's all about the patient and nobody cares about everybody else that works there. So what can a medical student do right now to prepare to go into your specialty? Probably get involved with some research and or meet people in the field. IR is a very, very, very small, small community. Everybody knows everybody. so. The more people you know in that field, the better your chances are. All right, this is one of my favorite questions. If you were to go back, would you change any of your experiences that got you to where you are right now? I'd like to be young like you and going to med school, but <laughs> I think coming into med school later on in my life taught me a lot of major life things, and uh, I don't think I'd change any of it. I like where I'm at right now. And finally, last question, question 73. What would you say to the aspiring radiologist or interventional radiologist right now? It's a long road, but now that I'm on the other side, it is 100% worth it. 100%. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Of course. Uh, that is all I have for you. And enjoy being an attending now. Um, and if you haven't yet, follow him on YouTube. Yeah. And all his other socials, you know. Dr. Cellini, come <laughs> at me. All right, Andy, it's been real, man.